How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. Now on today's show we're going to take a look back at last night's Premier League games which included a victory for Manchester United. And the last piece of news involves Arsenal and Rob Holding has signed a new long-term contract with the club. I represent my fucking self. How are we doing guys? Welcome to DT's Daily. That's right. So the first place we're going to start is the Premier League. Three matches last night and plenty of talking points. Now, first of all, Sheffield United. They finally won a game in the Premier League. 1-0. Billy Sharp with a penalty 15 minutes from time. Newcastle were reduced to 10 men. Ryan Fraser sent off. Um, and the significance of that means that he will miss the Arsenal game on Monday but Sheffield United how good must that feel to their fans I know they won um, in the FA Cup but this is the Premier League they finally won a game we are in January will it help save them this season no not for me they are too far adrift um, but it must be so nice to get that off their back and that they can finally look forward now. It's a fair play to them. And Newcastle, not a great result. And not a great performance. Uh, Wolves, they lost at home 2-1 to Everton. And the pressure seems to be mounting on Wolves a little bit now. Um, injuries and everything else is starting to catch up with them. And it's not a great result. And, um, you know, Everton... That's a brilliant away win. Alex Awobi scored in this game very early on. Um, Neves equalised. Um, but Everton with just over 10 minutes to go. Uh, Michael Keane um, scoring the winning goal. And uh, that takes them into the top four. But like I said, there's a bit of um, you know pressure mounting on Nuno now. And um, some Wolves fans are not happy. And... Um, yeah, it's not a great result. And they're just going through a difficult patch at the moment. Um, but don't take away their quality. They're a good side. They're just finding things a bit difficult at the moment. Um, but like I said, Everton, brilliant win for them. Uh, last game, of course, was Burnley against Manchester United. And Manchester United somehow won this game 1-0. Where on earth do I start with this game? When the majority... Of this game will be remembered because of VAR. Now the first incident I will speak about was Luke Shaw's tackle. He makes the slightest of touches on the ball but it's the follow-through and if you're going by the letter of the law and some of the red cards that you've given out this season then Luke Shaw should be a red card. I remember Aubameyang's tackle against Crystal Palace. There's no intent there. We know that. I'm not saying that Luke Shaw has intended to injure his player or anything. You think of um, the Brentford player against Spurs in the Carabao Cup. Um, De Silva. No intent in any way, shape or form to do what he did. He slipped. He was trying to do a chop. He slipped and it was a complete and utter freak accident. But he was sent off. So Luke Shaw should have been sent off. Now, from that whole incident, the ball was cleared upfield. Cavani goes through, gets brought down. The Burnley player is given a yellow card initially and it was like a double VAR incident. And he was looking at the Luke Shaw one first. Then he was going back to the Burnley one. And what he did first of all, he rescinded the yellow card for the Burnley player. Now, the only thing I can get from this is that because he had decided it was a foul for the Luke Shaw tackle and originally he had let play on, that incident involving Cavani and the Burnley player and the yellow card could not have happened because he gave a foul. So, do you get where I'm going here? So, because it's a foul, that move doesn't actually happen. So, that's why the yellow card was rescinded, I think. And why it was brought all the way back 
for a free kick to Burnley and then Luke Shaw given a yellow card. I think that's right. But anyway, um, yeah, he got a yellow card and it wasn't a yellow card. It's a red by the law of what we're in now. I'm not saying there's any intent or anything else. So don't jump down my throat. But it was a red card. And then Harry Maguire scores at the back post. And VAR says it's a foul. It's not a foul. It's a perfectly timed jump. Brilliant header. It's a goal. But VAR says it's a foul. Then we go into the second half. Pogba um, scores a deflected goal. And in the last 15 minutes, 10 minutes, something like that, if Burnley could actually have a goal scorer on their books, they would have probably won the game or got something out of it, at least a draw. But then there's another VAR incident with a minute to go. And Burnley, quite simply, should have had a penalty. Harry Maguire, handball. Now, let me explain this to you. If your hand is in a natural position, um, then, you know, you don't get a penalty. If your hands are down by your sides, you're not, you know, putting them in unorthodox places, unnatural places, then it's not penalties. But the ball comes over and Harry Maguire's hands are here. They're in front of him. They are in an unorthodox position, unnatural, whatever you want to call it. They shouldn't be there. It's a penalty. Seriously, come on. I don't care if you support Manchester United and you want to be biased, just be real. It's a penalty all day long. I've seen Manchester United fans saying that they had their heart in their mouths because they looked at the replays and were like, oh my God, that's a penalty. Because his hands were there. Why are they there? They don't need to be there. I understand you're jumping, but when you're jumping, your hands will still be down at this point. But when the ball is at head height, your hands don't need to be here other than to protect your face. It's a penalty. But it isn't. And Manchester United won. And they go top of the league momentarily. And that um, game against Liverpool coming up is going to be massive. Um, I still don't even know how Manchester United are top. Apart from the fact that everybody in the league has been crap this season. Um, do I think that they can stay there? No, I genuinely do not think that they can stay there. Um, but right now, they are there. And they're doing well. So, fair play to them. They're top of the league. And uh, I suppose we're going to have to put up with them talking about it every single day until they're not. But it is what it is. A very, very eventful game, that's for sure. Um, last piece of news involves Arsenal. And as expected, Rob Holding has signed a new long-term contract uh, running until 2024 with an option for a further deal. Um, I think this was... Like I was saying, expected. It's something that everybody's been talking about for a while. Um, he's 25 years old. Um, so in football terms, he's you know getting towards the peak of his career. 26, 27. His recent performances have been really, really good. Um, I won't deny that. And, you know, he struggled after coming back from his ACL injury. Um... It looked like he was on his way out on loan to Newcastle at the start of the season. Um, but an injury crisis meant that he was, you know, needed and he had an opportunity to stay. And to be fair, he's taken that opportunity with both hands. Um, and I look at it in terms of the bigger picture. That, you know, you've got Socrates leaving. You've got Mustafi leaving. You've got David Luiz leaving end of the season, you know, at the latest. Um, so there's three centre-backs going in terms of experience. One thing Rob Holding does have at his age is experience. Um, Mikel Arteta has made it very clear that he wants four or five centre-backs um, to be challenging for two positions. And also it's very evident that he likes left centre-backs, right centre-backs. It looks like we've got our left-hand side covered with Gabriel and Mari. No issues with that at all. And then you've got your right-hand side. 
And you've got Rob Holding there. And we do need someone else. We do need another body in there. Not so much this window. But in, you know, summertime, when all of these players will be gone. Socrates, probably this month, he's gone. Uh, Mustafi, if not this month, he's definitely gone at the end of the season because the contract's over. Same with David Luiz. So there's a space up for grabs. I don't think Callum Chambers is going to get that position or anything. I think we need a big commanding and imposing centre-back on that right-hand side. And I think that will be something for the summer. But you get that. You get Rob Holding. You've got Gabriel and Mary. I'm absolutely fine with that. Homegrown. Um, does all the right things. Can perform. And, you know, it protects his value. He had less than two years remaining on his contract. So you either get rid now for not a lot of money. Or... You know, if it doesn't work out, you've got somebody on a contract. He's not on a huge wage either. And um, you'll be able to, you know, sell him on for a decent amount of money at least. So I think that's absolutely fine. It's a win-win for everybody, to be honest with you. No problems with it at all. And um, congratulations to Rob Holden. I think he deserves it, to be honest with you. And um, like I said, he might not be first choice, you know, come next season or whatever. But I think that he's a good person to have in and around the squad and to be involved and play when he needed. So no issues at all. That's my take on it. So there we go. That is it for today's DT's Daily. As usual, let me know in the comment section what you think about today's topics. If you're new around here, hit the subscribe button, smash a like on this video, and I will see you a lot soon. I'm out of here.